Ryan Suckup, welcome back to the show, buddy. How are you? Hey, thanks, Jason. I'm doing great. Uh, appreciate you having me on. How are you doing? I'm great. Uh, I always, as I said, when you first came on here before we started recording, I'm good, but I'm not as good as you, my friend, because you are an NFC champion. Congratulations. Uh, how's it feel to be getting ready to prepare for a Super Bowl? It's got to be pretty cool. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's a really neat experience. It's something that I'm in my 12th year, and this is the first time that I've, I've gotten this far. And so um, it's, it's a really cool experience. It's cool seeing the excitement. Um, my kids are excited. My, you know, my family's excited. And um, it's something that uh, is, is a really special experience. And it's busy right now, but I'm thinking that hopefully after the next day or two, we'll get things kind of back to normal and, and get ready to roll. And you get to do it against the team that drafted you back in 2009. That's got to be a bit surreal, I would think. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of kind of wild how that worked out, and um, you know, obviously, I, you know, still have you still have a few friends on the team that that are playing in Kansas City, so that'll be good to get to see those guys, and uh, still know a few of the coaches, and so um, that you know, I've got some got some guys that are there that are will probably be lifelong friends. That's awesome, Ryan Suckup's joining us here on Sports Spectrum. I want to ask you, there is that moment with 4:42 left in the game, uh, the NFC Championship game at Lambeau against Green Bay. Uh, it was such a clutch kick. And I, I said that when you hit that field goal, I turned to my wife and my daughter and I said, I think that's the, that's going to be the game. I mean, obviously, you never know with Aaron Rodgers. But when you send it from five to eight, and it was such an important uh, moment, I thought, for Tampa Bay to understand, okay, this is, this is the separation maybe that we needed. I want to kind of get inside your head a little bit if you could take me through what's going through your mind as you're on the sidelines and you're waiting for I assume waiting for Bruce Arians to say field goal and you run out on the field what's kind of happening you know before you get that call to run out on the field and make that kick yeah you know obviously you're uh you're anticipating that, that there there may be a situation where you have to kick a field goal there and so uh just trying to stay ready in the in the net it was a cold day so you're trying to stay warm moving around and hitting some balls and um one of the things that was actually kind of neat about that kick and 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 this has happened several a lot of times in my career and I've, i'm very grateful for it is uh that was like a situation where you know the fans that they had there it, the stadium got actually got pretty loud for how many people they had there and they're you know it was a it was kind of a big point in the game and so the world tells us, right, like that's those are situations where we're supposed to have anxiousness or nervousness. And it, it was just really cool because um, I had a lot of peace over that kick. I felt very, com like very comfortable out there. Um, and one of the things that I always pray for before every game and read is Philippians 4, 6, 7, uh, mm -hmm. where it says, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with Thanksgiving, present your request to God and let the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. And I love that where it talks about that peace of God that transcends all understanding. And so that's something that um, it's just one of those moments where you go, oh, my gosh, that was so cool. Like the Lord gave me total peace there. And it can only be um, it can only be um, explained from the peace of Christ that transcends all understanding. Like we don't get that because we go out and practice a lot. Like that's not what gives us peace in that situation. Uh, for me, it's the, it's, it's knowing that the Lord blessed us with that peace to go out there and, and it's from him. And that's a cool, that's a cool thing to sit there and go, wow, like, thank you, God, that you would bless me that way. Uh, seeing his hand in it is it, really cool. Yeah. I was talking to uh, your holder, Bradley Pinion. He was on the podcast a couple of days ago and Brad reference that you you have this prayer that you pray before every kick can you kind of expand on that i know you said philippians 4 6 and 7 is that the prayer what are you actually saying in that moment right before you go to kick yeah so well it stems it stems from philippians 4 6 and 7 but um i one of the things i just really quick right before i take my steps i just say lord give us peace and that's what i pray for is for the lord to give me peace so that i can go out there and be free be free in christ and not um not be tense not be nervous not be anxious but just go out there and have that freedom um and that peace that only comes from him when you kick it do you know right away the second you kick it if it's good or not yeah most of the time uh sometimes if you have a lot of wind or something like that there can be some external circumstances but most of the time you, you know as soon as uh, as soon as you make contact i want to ask you about 2020 because 2019 was such a tough season for you uh you were with tennessee but you were dealing with some injuries and then a few days before the pandemic happens you're released and you're without a job and it takes you all the way right up until the season i'm wondering what that time between march and let's say august or september was like for you and the uh, suck up family 
Yeah. So it's been, that's been one of the most awesome things about this year is that uh, last year was a really difficult year for me coming off of an injury, um, you know, trying to play uh, maybe probably wasn't where I needed to be and really struggled when I played and it was tough. It was frustrating. Um, it was definitely some adversity. And, you know, you kind of, when you go through something like that, it's, I think human nature where you start to kind of doubt yourself and you, it's more of um, you're wondering, can I still do this, that type of thing. And um, the off season was really a blessing for me because it gave, allowed me time to get away from the game a little bit. Uh, it allowed me a lot of time with my family, which was great. I really enjoyed that. Um, and then it also made me realize how much I missed the game when I wasn't, you know, we, obviously there weren't OTAs anyway because of COVID, but um, it just kind of made me go, man, I really miss this. Like I still have, I still want to do this. Um, and, and then when I got the opportunity in Tampa, uh, it was amazing. This is probably more of an answer than you were looking for, but I just want to share no, this it. This anyway. is what I'm looking for, my friend, please. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when I got the call to come down to Tampa, um, initially I was really excited. I was like, okay, hey, this will be good. I'll go down and do a workout. I'll just kind of get my name out there. I don't know if I'll get signed or not, but it'll just be good to, you know, to get out there and show teams that I'm healthy again. And um, I came down, I uh, did the workout and I had a really, uh, had a really good workout. And right after that, the Bucks basically, I kind of had a feeling that they were going to offer me a contract. And that night they did. And we were kind of going back and forth, trying to figure some things out. And believe it or not, it was actually one of those things where I think the enemy was almost creeping in, the kind of telling me, like putting these doubts in my mind of like, are you, do you really think you're ready for this? Have you recovered from your injury? Like there were all these things that were, part of it was probably genuine of like, Hey, I'm going to be apart from my family this year. Uh, there were some real self doubts there. There was some real concern. And I, I was really torn at the time, whether, Hey, do, is this exactly the right situation for me? Is this what I want to do? And um, man, this is, this is wild. But literally the night before that workout, um, I had been praying about this, like, Lord, if you want this for me, and my family, like, I just trust you with it. And I'll just trust you to take care of it. And you will, you'll show me what, if you want us to be here or not. And so I was, had walked out of the hotel room and I was staying at the Renaissance hotel here down in Tampa, it's right by the airport. And I walked out of my hotel room at like seven 30 or eight o'clock that night. And there had just been a, it just been a thunderstorm that had gone through. And I looked out over, cause you could see Raymond James stadium from, uh, from my, where the parking lot of the hotel. And I walked out and I kid you not, I have a picture of it on my phone. I'll text you the picture when we get done. Yeah. But there's a, there's a rainbow that goes directly over and it looks like it goes into uh, Raymond James stadium. And, I, and it, I'm not like one of those guys that like gets like, Oh, this is a sign. This is a sign. Like all those things. Like I'm not like a huge sign guy per se, Sure. but it was like, it was like unavoidable. Like I was like, Oh my gosh, the Lord is showing me that he wants me to be here. Um, and honestly, the next night when I was going back and forth on the contract, that is what, like, as I was torn, like, do I do this? Do I not? I'm going to be away from my family and my re all these things going through my mind. And that is probably the deciding factor that where I was like, you know what? I have to do this. Like God has showed me that he wants me to be here. And um, that was probably one of the biggest reasons why I decided to do it. Um, so it was just, and then to see what the Lord has done this year, uh, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. That's so cool. That's such a great story. And I think about, you know, if you didn't make the Super Bowl and if you had lost or whatever, or something along the lines, that's still, you know, kind of God's direction, right? And I think that is that piece you talked about in Philippians 4. I think that scripture is just perfect because it allows you to have the peace and the will to say, okay, not mine, but yours be done, right? Absolutely. And that was, that was the coolest thing. I think when we, um, even as I may have had doubts of if I was ready to get back in there and, and play and all that type of stuff, uh, basically trust in the Lord, he's taking care of all of it. And, and I think that that's a beautiful thing. Like when we just kind of give up our, sometimes our thoughts or whatever, and we just give it to the Lord, it's amazing to see, like when we trust him, man, it's, it's amazing what he, what he'll do in our lives. And, um, that's been something that has just really strengthened my faith this year. Um, just how, how things have gone. It's been, been amazing. Tell me how, you walked through and God kind of brought you through this season, uh, being away from your family. You mentioned that, and that's not easy. You know, you got little kids and you got a wife who's awesome and just obviously holding down the fort and supporting you. But at the same time, you're, you're going through. And by the way, we're in COVID and we're, you know, all of these, you know, restrictions and, you know, having to quarantine and everything else going on in the midst of this weird season of life, but even this weird season of playing in the NFL, but you had to be away from your family, kind of walk us through what that's like. People don't realize the sacrifices that need to be made 
uh, in certain circumstances, especially one like yours. Yeah, absolutely. So to start on that question, this is this is even more. Let me let me just brag on my wife for a minute, because uh, I came down here. and I signed, I think, like September 1st is when I signed to come down here. Well, my wife came down that weekend. We were off because it was the weekend before the first game weekend. So you get that weekend, you get Saturday, Sunday off. So she came down to help me find a place to live. And when she did, she came down and she had she pulled out a card that my son had drawn for me that was basically like, hey, we miss you, dad. Go, daddy. He, you know, drawn a picture of me kicking a, a field goal on the back, kicking the ball through the uprights. Yeah. And I opened up the card and he had drawn a picture of me, a draw, a, a picture of my wife, a picture of him and a picture of his sister. And then there was a third third baby in there and I was like at first I looked at my wife and I was like who, did he draw his friend like who is it and I, I look I, like it didn't hit me and I look over and she's got a little tear in her eye and I was like oh my goodness you're pregnant aren't you and that's how, so I signed and four days later we found out we were pregnant so wow. my wife has been at home she's been at home all season she's raising two kids under five pregnant with a third um so she, the fact that she's holding the fort down man it just not that you don't not that I didn't already love my wife and appreciate my wife, but it just makes you go, man, like very thankful that I have a woman like that, that will allow me to come down here. And she's doing that at home, doing a great job raising the kids. Um, it makes you appreciate your wife a lot. And so um, that's been really cool. I think it's been hard for both of us being away. Like it's hard for me. We try to see each other as much as we can, obviously doing the distance thing. Um, but it's, it is hard. I think on the, one of the good things with that is that it makes you just rely on the Lord because um, you know, I'm down here by myself and it's like the, the, one of the blessings of it is, is that I've got a lot of time to be in the word and I have a lot of time to just be in prayer. And, and that part of it has been a blessing. And I, I hopeful, you know, I think it's been the same way for my wife. So, um, it, it's been a challenging season, but I think we've both grown a lot. And sometimes I think God uses the challenging times to grow us and to mold us. Um, you know, he's the master potter and we're the clay. And I think he uses these times to, to get, the clay exactly how he wants it so um that's been that's been a, a cool part of it well you play with um the goat as they call him tom brady but maybe we'll just start calling your wife that what do you think <laughs> yeah, yeah she's the goat she's the goat in my book <laughs> uh, no question no i question. love it ryan suckups joining us here on sports spectrum i want to ask you about faith this year for you within the, the team and in, in the locker room of the tampa bay buccaneers obviously we've talked to quite a few guys already and even uh, coach Clyde Christensen was on the show and and talking to him and knowing how much he loves Jesus and, and and looks at his job as a calling I wonder when you came to this team and kind of acclimating yourself and a guy like Brad Pinion who's you know your holder and just being around a group of believers what did faith look like for you during the season being able to stay discipled stay you know, on your own time in the word but really being able to get together which I know was really hard for a lot of people because of COVID. What was that like this year? Yeah. So you mentioned some of my, some of my just favorite people right there. Um, I actually have known Clyde Christensen for a long time uh, before I got here. So that was really cool getting to know him and he's unbelievable. Um, he does yeah. a great job leading Bible studies and uh, you know, his faith is infectious and it rubs off on people. And, you know, there's just something different about Clyde and it's, it's his relationship with the Lord. And so it's a blessing having a guy like that. And then uh, Bradley, Bradley and I, this is cool how the Lord works a couple of years ago. Uh, before we even knew each other, we got paired in the same uh, group, basically at PAO. Yeah. And so we are fair. We had kind of known each other from that. And so I'm coming down here, you instantly know, Hey man, this guy's a believer. It, you know how it is. There's so many things that happen during an NFL season where it's, you just need, you need fellowship and you need guys to pour into you and you need to pour into guys. And um, I'm really grateful that the Lord has put me with guys like that. And then on top of that, our long snapper here, uh, the three of us, you know, we work really closely together. Zach Trenner, uh, really strong believer. Um, that's something I'm grateful for, man, to go out on the field, not just on the field, but go, do kind of do life with on a daily basis um, with guys that are grounded in their faith is something that is is a huge blessing. And so hopefully uh, we can all encourage each other. I think we do that. And um, I'm grateful for that. So I asked Brad Pinion and I asked Clyde Christensen the same question. I'm going to ask it to you. Um, and I will say playing with Tom Brady, you have to almost, it's almost like the obligatory Tom Brady question that every player on the Buccaneers is going to get as you continue to do thousands of interviews over the next couple of days leading up to the game on Sunday. But tell me about playing with him and the unique situation that you're in coming in late he came in late too right I mean this is his first year your first year uh, and just kind of the leader and some of the things that we as fans don't see behind the scenes that makes this guy so special and and really the greatest of all time at the quarterback position 
Yeah, that's been really cool. Uh, it's been really cool to, to obviously be a teammate with the greatest player that's ever played the game. And what's cool about that is to obviously winning is great. That's awesome. But it, it's amazing to see how he works. And the guy is an unbelievable leader. Um, he makes everyone around him better. I mean, there's just no question. He makes everybody on this team better. And seeing how he does it, uh, his attention to detail, just all the little things that he does, the way that he leads, um, it's something where you just go, man, that is cool. That is cool to see. And, um, it's a, you know, it's something I'm sure – you know, you, I'll tell my kids and hopefully my grandkids about one day. And uh, it's something I'm really grateful for. Uh, just sometimes you you, you kind of sit there and go, oh, my goodness, I cannot believe I'm I'm on the same team as this guy. And uh, you kind of have to pinch yourself a little bit. But it's been really it's been a blessing to get to play with him. And also the other thing, too, that I've been so impressed with is the way that he treats people. Uh, mm -hmm. He makes everyone feel so important. And I can't tell you how many times, you know, even for a guy like myself, um, who may only have a few plays a game and just the times where he's come up to me and been like, man, that was a, that was a big kick for us or whatever it is. He just does a great job making everybody feel important. He, he, he's genuine. Um, and it's something that is really cool to see a guy in his position, the way that he treats people is really, really cool. That's cool. By the way, I did the math. It would be a 2029 when you're his age. Uh, and who knows <laughs> if you're going to be still kicking in 2029 when you're 43 years old, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I tell you what, if, if I if I am, we'll do an interview. How about that, Jason? <laughs> mark mark me down. <laughs> Ryan, I'll set the text. I'll put it in the uh, I'll put it in the notes in the schedule that we'll, we'll get you back. Yeah, on it, I'll you. put I, I'll get it in I'll get it in the calendar. How about that? You got it, buddy. <laughs> hey, congratulations. All the best. Maybe I'll see you down there. Who knows? We're coming down in a couple days and and uh all the best to you. I hope you guys get that W and it would be such a cool story to kind of finish out 2020 and the 2020 season. Ryan, suck up. All the best to you, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks, Jason. God bless, man. Thanks for having me on.